ladies and gentlemen. I got my coffee. You got your coffee. That coffee is decaf. That means it's time for coffee with the cowbell. Cheers. I'm your host with the most, Ricardo Wilkins. Nice to see you again. If you're joining, you're joining because you're a teams and collaboration fanatic like myself and you're here to listen to my musings about such things. If you are joining live on any one of, I'm never ready for this, uh, any one of these five platforms, um, I guess I could have put that on the other side. If you're joining from any one of those and you've got chat, um, feel free to put questions, comments, or say hello in the chat. I think I'm monitoring most, if not all of them, and and uh, happy to take any, talk about any questions or anything you may have. In the meantime, though, um, I th- thought today I'd talk about... Uh, can always talk about some things that kind of come up throughout the week. One of the things that came up this week is tabs. And uh, I I sometimes get the feeling tabs don't get enough uh, love and attention. I also get the feeling sometimes people don't know what tabs are for, how they could be used. Um, And given that tab, there's Real, there's literally hundreds of tabs that could be added and I'm certainly not about to go through all of them but I thought I'd go through a few that maybe might help us see why tabs are and can be valuable um, so if you're wondering what is this tab thing that you speak of it is essentially you know we're here in a team teams have channels and channels have tabs tabs are up at the top every team every channel at least has two tabs one is what's called posts but that is essentially the chat of the uh let me go to one that's actually got something the chat of the um channel in that team is the posts and then the other is files that is the files for that particular channel And then beyond that, you have the plus symbol for additional tabs. So if we click around here, we can see some that are kind of already created in this demo environment. So here we are in the general channel for the retail team. Someone on the team has decided to make. um, So so let me start. So we got the post, the files, right? And this one does have files in it. And then uh, someone has added a retail accounts tab, which is, in this case, a SharePoint uh, list. So they have, um, let me come here. They have hit the plus symbol. And this is maybe where I should have started. And this is the place where all the different tabs are. These top ones are more native ones and in the case of what I was just showing they chose the SharePoint tab but you can see down here there are literally hundreds of other tabs third-party tabs that could be added so I wasn't I wasn't joking about that Uh, okay so what they are are essentially windows into some additional functionality in most, if not all cases, and this is an important distinction, they aren't really, they aren't teams assets. That may not be the best way to describe it, but essentially it's better to think of them as windows to things that are el- that are elsewhere. Um, the reason I, one of the reasons I say think about it like that is because if someone removes a tab to your favorite OneNote notebook, they have not deleted your notebook. They've deleted a tab that pointed to that notebook. 
somebody deletes your the tab to your favorite Excel file, they haven't deleted the file, they deleted a, a pointer, a tab, a window to that file. So that's why I was describing it that way. Um, so hopefully as we go through some examples, this will make more sense. So in, this, in the case of this one, they again, they added a, a tab that shows a SharePoint list. So this is a list that lives in SharePoint. I'll, I'll open it in SharePoint with this button to show that it exists out here in the SharePoint site. Certainly people in the team could come out here to view it. But one should see the convenience of this nicely, elegantly integrated uh, list right here at, with one click to the tab. Again, if I remove this tab, it does not affect the data in this. What's nice about this example, I mean, this is a real time window to this data. And this is data that can change either on the SharePoint side. People could add or edit info or even here within Teams, I can add add or edit info here. So for anybody who's on teams that does a lot of stuff in lists, in tables, in graphs, or not graphs, uh, you know, any tabular kind of data or list data, both SharePoint lists and Excel tab, SharePoint list tabs and Excel tabs should both be uh, high priority for you to kind of to learn because hopefully you can see it could be pretty cool to have your tabular data right here in the team one click away. Um, so uh, do they have a, I wonder if I can find that. So that's a, a SharePoint list. I was hoping this, I was seeing if I could find an, uh, an Excel. This might be, nope, that's Power BI. We'll come back to that. Um, Let's just make one then just to show an example of the difference. So again, we were looking at a SharePoint list of data here. Or we could if we're another way to look at some tabular data could be an Excel spreadsheet. Um, let's see if we got anything already existing. Let's peek or poke around. OK, here we go. Let's add this one here. Uh, I'll leave that off. And so now here's my, uh, again, more uh, a tabular data. We even got sales data here. Live, if someone's updating the, the workbook elsewhere, I'm gonna see those changes. And if I click in here and I make changes, it is changing the spreadsheet. So we have these fully functional tabs to this, to this data. So and now in this case, I've got two list list type contents going on here. So again, if you're an Excel person or if you do a lot of your work in Excel, this should be pretty exciting if you haven't been using it already. This is also going to um, is this essentially like working with Excel in the web. So the, if you are into real time collaboration, co-authoring with the spreadsheets, it's going to honor that as well. So it's, a, it's pretty fully functional. And uh, when when all else fails, you can um, open it up in uh, in uh, the desktop app. So those are two quick examples just from a, a data perspective. Uh, the other one that I had opened quickly from a data perspective. Uh, of course, I lost it. It was a Power BI. Oh, I said there's Word. This, uh, essentially, this is giving us other examples here. This is a Word doc. Why would I put a tab to a Word doc? In this case, I imagine this is a either the current doc everybody in this team is working on. Maybe it's a highly used one. I'm making it a tab because I don't want the team to have to go hunting and pecking around in files to find this. I know you need it. Let's make it a tab. Let's make it one click away. Open it up, ready to either read or edit where was my power bi uh, here's a sales report so there i think this is a excel okay here we go this, this isn't the one i was looking for but this will work uh power bi reports if you do you know being able to put those in here and maybe one day it'll load 
this is the first time I've clicked on this particular one in this environment. So that could explain the slowness. We'll let that bake for a little while. And then here, someone has added um, a tab to planner. Again, fully functional. All of that whole moving cards around. Work still works here. Opening it up to see it's the, the, the info that's there. Again, that's because they come and hit the plus symbol and they went to uh, where I know it's right in front of my eyes here, or maybe not. Uh, planner. Oh, it, that's because it's task by planner because it in, integrates to do as well. But anyway, uh, they've either created a new plan or use an existing plan. So that's how they created this one, this product launch event. So again, fully functional. And as people are making changes, I'm going to see those as well. OK. Um, so hopefully the the basic ones you know make sense word excel powerpoint um you know those make sense for folks that use a lot of notebooks the tab is is uh, especially useful um in terms of uh perhaps going to a an existing notebook but not just that but having a tab to a specific page of a specific notebook OK. Sometimes uh, and this doesn't have much going on, but sometimes trying to get someone to the, the spe a specific page in a notebook is. Uh, takes some some effort. So these tabs are useful for that. And uh, a couple others I wanted to call out are the website. That's particularly useful. This is basically any any https url you can think of can go there for the most part other than a, a site that you know maybe it's got a is if that url goes to some fancy iframe something or other or something you know something kind of weird this might not work out but your typical web page is going to open up here um and so now you've got a window to a a highly used website for a particular team uh it is essentially just a window to that website. So if that website requires some kind of login, it's not passing in any credentials. You would have to log in and others who don't have the, lo the appropriate login are not going to magically get in because it's a tab. But that's very useful. Anything that can be sh most things that can be shown in the browser could be put into a tab using that website tab. The other ones that might not be as um, obvious for their usefulness um at least one would be uh, whiteboard you probably you probably already know whiteboard in terms of just as a, a separate app um to do as its name implies you know whiteboard features writing on a pen maybe you use it on your surface hub you might know whiteboard from teams meetings where you can fire one up in the meeting and interact everybody interact in it and so uh here I'm putting one in as a tab in a team and you might say, why would I do that? You know, one thing, one reason why I could see this being valuable becomes a canvas, an open canvas for this team, especially if you, this is a creative, a, a team full of creatives. This is going to be obviously useful, but, uh, you know, anyone might appreciate an open canvas for putting things like, for instance, you know, maybe we're collecting screenshots of interesting things, so hopefully more interesting than, than this, but you know, our favorite icons or something. And then maybe other people are coming in and, you know, deciding if they like it or not. And, uh, you know, maybe even writing their comments about it or, you know, or typing something in things like that. Um, but it becomes, you know, this, this canvas that, uh, we can just come in and just free form, you know, do things, you could say one note is same concept and, and in many ways it is this has some features that are just more suited to an, an to a whiteboard experience um, and especially if people are using their pens on their devices then this becomes uh, pretty useful as well and then it's an end, endless canvas as well so um so that could be another use uh usefulness to 
this whiteboard it might be a whiteboard that you're prepping for the next meeting. Um, so having that one click away and then ready to go when the meeting uh, gets started could be useful. Um, and then um, let, me, let me see if that whiteboard one that we were waiting on might be done. Oh, that's the Excel. I keep forgetting where I originally clicked. Uh, nope. I do not remember. Oh, well, here we go. Here is a some some Power BI. Yeah, in this environment, I don't think I fired up Power BI at all yet, and that's what I'm assuming is is the is why this thing is is uh, having trouble. Let me do one thing here. Go to all my apps. Go down to yeah. Maybe I don't even have it enabled. Oh well, let's see. Let's check this. Could be that it's not enabled. I guess it is enabled for this user. I don't know if that's going to help. Doesn't look like it. Let's do a reload of the tab. Still taking its time. It's not failing. It's just taking its time. So that could be any number of things. Anyway, last thing I'll say here is we, we talked about the kind of the common tabs. And then there's tons of third party tabs for which. I'm wondering here what would be a good example to um, use here. One that isn't going to require my cr some credentials, because obviously if, if any of these are paid services, you know, they don't just magically work just because you see the logo here. If they have a subscription or anything like that, the, the thing's going to honor that. So you're not getting magic access to these things. Uh, many of them, you know, potentially have a, uh, a free component. But again, if they don't, you know, this isn't magically giving you access. Let me try this one here. I'm a little familiar with Flipgrid. And so again, it's asked me to sign up or sign in. So this is a perfect example of something that does have a uh, sign in component. Um, this one, I think, might have a free version. Well, it still needs to sign in. So I don't have a, well, actually, it looks like that did sort of start up something there. But yeah, I don't have an example. I don't have something that I know is just kind of ready to go. Yeah, but hopefully you get the idea that all these things are here available. They are here because they have an integration into Teams from a tab perspective. And the rest just depends on if you've got access to their services through your subscriptions or sign ins and things of that nature. OK, the last thing I'll say about tabs and why they're useful is because tabs can you can talk about tabs. So in every tab, you typically see this little uh, button here for the conversation. And I could say something like, um, you know, please put your edits in the new white in the new whiteboard here. Now, one that is a conversation that is always accessible by this tab. So if I'm in this tab and I'm wondering what my teammates are saying about this tab's content, I'm one click away from whatever conversation is going on. That conversation is also going on here in the channel for the um, for that team. So you can see what the stuff I just did created a new post. And now my edit, my uh, comments and anyone else's comments are basically going to be happening in this conversation thread. And all of that will be represented here in this thread as well. So that's for the whiteboard. It could be the same thing for any of these other things, right? We could talk, we can have a conversation about this planner plan. We can have a conversation about this usability document. They all have a conversation thread associated with the tab. So again, that can be useful. Um, again, that is, 
uh, it gets a little confusing when you're looking at uh, our office docs because again that's that's a conversation specific to teams when i open this word doc in word i should not expect to see that conversation at least today i'd expect to see that conversation in word it's a conversation about the tab for that word doc in in teams so hopefully that makes sense so that may be one of the even if you've been using tabs, you might have neglected to you know realize you can have conversations about tabs. So even if I didn't blow your mind related to tabs in general, maybe I blew your mind about having a conversation about a tab. So I hope in some way I blew your mind about something and hope that was useful. All right. So uh, if it is useful, useful, let me know in the comments. Um, let me know about other topics you might be interested in. Other than that, you can finish your decaf, finish your work, get some sleep. Glad you joined me. This has been Coffee with the Cowbell.